For the job interview situation, let's envision a real-life conversation that might take place. Interviewer. Thank you for coming in today. How are you feeling? Applicant. Thank you for having me. I'm a bit nervous, to be honest, but also excited about the opportunity. Interviewer. It's completely normal to feel nervous. Let's try to make this as comfortable as possible. Can you tell me a little about yourself and why you're interested in this position? Applicant. Certainly. I've always been passionate about field slash industry, and I've spent the last few years honing my skills in specific area. When I saw the listing for this position, I was thrilled because it seems like a perfect match for my skills and interests, especially because of your company's commitment to company's notable commitment or project. Interviewer. That's great to hear. We're definitely looking for someone who shares our passion for company's notable commitment or project. Can you give me an example of a project or challenge you've tackled in the past that you feel has prepared you for this role? Applicant. Absolutely. In my previous role at previous company, I was tasked with significant project or responsibility. It was challenging because describe challenge, but I managed to describe solution or outcome. It was a significant learning experience, and I believe the skills and insights I gained from it would be highly beneficial in this role. Interviewer. Impressive. It sounds like you have a strong background and the right mindset for this position. Do you have any questions about the role or the company? Applicant. Yes, I do. Could you tell me more about specific aspect of the role or company the applicant is curious about? Interviewer. Of course. Provides detailed information about the specific aspect. Is there anything else you'd like to know? Applicant. No, that covers everything for now. Thank you for explaining. Interviewer. You're welcome. We'll be in touch soon with our decision. Thank you again for your time and for sharing your experiences with us. Applicant. Thank you for considering me. I look forward to hearing from you. This conversation reflects the common dynamics of a job interview, where the interviewer aims to understand the applicant's background and fit for the role, and the applicant seeks to present their qualifications and learn more about the position and company. For the grocery shopping scenario, let's create a real-life conversation that could happen between two friends who run into each other at the store. Friend 1. Hey, what a surprise seeing you here. How have you been? Friend 2. I'm good, just picking up a few things for dinner. How about you? Friend 1. Same here. Trying to decide between these two sauces. One's a bit pricier but supposed to be organic and all natural. The other's a regular brand but much cheaper. Friend 2. Tough choice. I usually go for the organic one when it's something I use a lot. I feel like it's worth the extra cost for the quality and health benefits. What are you making for dinner? Friend 1. Thinking of making spaghetti. You know, something quick and easy. And you. Friend 2. I'm on a health kick so I'm trying this new quinoa salad recipe I found. Need to grab a few more veggies though. Have you ever tried quinoa? Friend 1. I have but not in a salad. Sounds interesting. Maybe you can share the recipe if it turns out good. Friend 2. Definitely. If it's a success I'll send it your way. Maybe we can even do a little recipe exchange dinner sometime. Friend 1. That sounds like a great idea. Let's plan for that. I'll go for the organic sauce then. Might as well start the health kick with tonight's dinner. Friend 2. Good choice. I'll let you get back to your shopping. Catch up soon. Friend 1. For sure. Take care and see you around. This conversation captures a casual and friendly exchange that includes making decisions about products, sharing personal updates, and even planning a future get-together based on a shared interest in trying new recipes. For the family gathering scenario, let's envision a conversation that might take place among family members. Grandparent. It's so wonderful to see everyone together again. How's school going for you, dear? Child. It's going well. I'm learning a lot. Today, we did a science experiment that was really fun. Parent. That's great to hear. And how about you? Sibling? How's the new job treating you? Sibling. It's been challenging, but I'm enjoying it. There's a lot to learn, and the team is fantastic. Aunt. I brought some of those cookies you all love. Made sure to bake extra this time. Uncle. And I've got the barbecue going outside. 
The weather's just perfect for it. Cousin. Can't wait for those burgers. They're always the highlight. Grandparent. Let's make sure to take a family photo later. It's not often we get everyone together like this. Parent. Absolutely, let's do it after dinner. Right now, let's all help with setting the table. Dinner's almost ready. Child. Can I help with the dessert? I want to learn how to make those cookies. Aunt. Of course, sweetheart. I'll show you the recipe. It's quite simple. Sibling. I'll help with the barbecue. Uncle, you need an extra pair of hands. Uncle. Sure thing. The more, the merrier. This conversation reflects the warmth and camaraderie of a family gathering, where members catch up on each other's lives, share responsibilities, and make plans to enjoy the time together. For the first date scenario, let's create a conversation that captures the essence of getting to know someone in a romantic setting. Persona. This place is really charming. How did you find it? Person B. I'm glad you like it. A friend recommended it. They said the ambience was perfect for a quiet evening out. So, what do you like to do in your free time? Person A. I'm quite into photography. I love capturing moments, especially in nature. How about you? Person B. That's really interesting. I enjoy hiking, actually. Being out in nature is refreshing. Maybe your photography and my hikes could align sometime. Person A. That sounds like a great idea. Do you have any favorite trails? Person B. There's this one trail that overlooks the city from the east. It's beautiful, especially at sunrise. Have you been on any memorable photography trips recently? Person A. Yes, I went to the mountains last month. The landscapes were breathtaking. I'll have to show you some of the pictures. Person B. I'd love to see them. It sounds like we have a shared appreciation for nature. Person A. Definitely. It's great to meet someone who enjoys the outdoors as much as I do. What's your favorite dish here? Person B. I'm a fan of their pasta dishes. They're made from scratch. Do you have any preferences or dietary restrictions? Person A. I'm pretty open when it comes to food. I always like trying new dishes. Let's go with your recommendation. Person B. Great choice. Let's order the pasta then. And maybe we can plan that hike sometime soon. Person A. I'd like that. It's been a lovely evening so far. Person B. I agree. It's nice getting to know you. This conversation weaves together personal interests, future plans, and mutual appreciation, creating a pleasant and engaging first date experience. In the scenario of dealing with a flat tire, the conversation might unfold like this. Person 1. Okay, it says here we need to loosen the lug nuts before jacking up the car. Have you done this before? Person 2. No, this is the first time. I'm not entirely sure which tool is the lug wrench. Person 1. Let me see. I think it's this one, the one with the long handle. It should give us enough leverage to loosen the nuts. Person 2. All right, let's give it a try. Do we need to do anything with the brakes? Person 1. Good point. The manual says to engage the parking brake fully to ensure the car doesn't roll. Safety first. Person 2. Parking brake is on. Now let's try loosening these nuts. After some effort. Person 1. That took more muscle than I expected, but we've got them loosened. Time to use the jack. Person 2. I've got the jack positioned. The manual shows it should go right here, under the car frame. Person 1. Slow and steady with the jack. We don't want the car coming down unexpectedly. Once the car is jacked up and the tire is being replaced. Person 2. This spare looks good. I'm glad we checked the pressure last month. Person 1. Yeah, that was a good call. Almost there. Just need to tighten these lug nuts back on. Then we can lower the car. Person 2. I'll hold the flashlight. It's getting a bit dark. Person 1. Thanks. Let's tighten these in a star pattern, like the manual suggests, to make sure the tire is balanced. Once done. Person 2. That wasn't so bad, was it? A bit of teamwork and we're back in business. Person 1. Definitely a learning experience. Next time we'll be pros. Let's pack up and hit the road again. This conversation captures the collaborative effort and problem solving involved in changing a flat tire, especially for those who might be doing it for the first time. In the cozy kitchen scenario, 
where someone is trying out a new recipe, the conversation might go like this. Cook, I hope this turns out well. The recipe looked amazing online, but it's more complicated than I thought. Observer, it smells incredible in here already. What's the dish called? Cook, it's a traditional dish name, something I've never tried before. It involves a lot of steps, but I'm up for the challenge. Observer, do you need any help? I can chop some vegetables or stir the pot. Cook, actually, could you help me with the garlic? We need it finely chopped. And could you keep an eye on this sauce? It needs to be stirred occasionally so it doesn't stick. Observer, sure thing. This sauce smells heavenly. What's in it? Cook, it's a mix of ingredients with a bit of special ingredient for an extra kick. The recipe says it's the secret to the dish's unique flavor. Observer, I can't wait to try it. Cooking really is an art, isn't it? Cook, absolutely. There's something therapeutic about it, too. Following the steps, watching the ingredients come together. It's rewarding. Observer, definitely. And it's even better when you get to share the meal with someone. Makes all the effort worth it. Cook, speaking of, could you set the table? I think we're just about ready to serve. Observer, of course. Let's make it look nice. A meal like this deserves a proper presentation. Cook, thanks for your help. It's been fun cooking together. I think we should make this a regular thing. Observer, I'd love that. There's nothing like enjoying a homemade meal, especially with good company. This conversation captures the collaborative and explorative spirit of cooking a new recipe, emphasizing the joy of sharing the process and the meal with someone else. In the scenario of being caught in a sudden rain shower, the conversation might unfold like this. Person 1. Wow, this rain came out of nowhere. I didn't bring an umbrella, did you? Person 2. No, I didn't expect it to rain at all today. Looks like we're stuck here for a bit. Person 1. At least we found some shelter. It's actually kind of nice, watching the rain from here. Person 2. True, there's something peaceful about it. But I hope it lets up soon. These groceries are getting heavy. Person 1. Let's hope. At least the city looks beautiful in the rain, with all the lights reflecting on the wet streets. Person 2. Definitely. It's like a scene from a movie. Makes getting caught in the rain not so bad. Person 1. Exactly. And hey, it's a good story for later, right? The time we got drenched in the middle of the city. Person 2. Right? I'll add it to the list of our unexpected adventures. Speaking of, do you think that cafe across the street is open? We could wait out the rain with some coffee. Person 1. Good idea. Let's make a run for it on the count of 3. Ready? Person 2. Ready? 1, 2, 3, go. This conversation captures the spontaneity and camaraderie of facing an unexpected situation together, finding humor and beauty in the moment despite the inconvenience. In the context of maintaining a fitness routine outdoors, the conversation might go like this. Person 1. This park is perfect for a morning run, isn't it? The view by the water is incredible. Person 2. Absolutely. It beats running on a treadmill any day. How many laps are you aiming for today? Person 1. I'm thinking of doing 5 today. I've been gradually increasing my distance. How about you? Person 2. I'm working on my pace so I might do fewer laps but focus on speed. Maybe some interval training. Person 1. Sounds intense. Have you tried the outdoor fitness equipment here? I've been thinking of incorporating some strength training into my routine. Person 2. Yeah, I use them quite often. They're great for a quick circuit workout. I can show you a few exercises if you like. Person 1. That would be great, thanks. I'm always looking to mix things up. Keeps the routine from getting stale. Person 2. Definitely. It's all about finding the right balance. And it's more fun working out with someone else. Keeps you motivated. Person 1. For sure. Speaking of motivation, have you ever thought about signing up for one of the local races? It could be a fun challenge. Person 2. That's an interesting idea. A race could be a good goal to work towards. Maybe we could train together? Person 1. I'd like that. It's a date then. Let's finish our workout for today and start planning for the race. Person 2. Sounds like a plan. Let's push each other to do our best. 
This conversation reflects the shared enthusiasm and camaraderie between two individuals committed to their fitness goals, offering mutual support and encouragement. In the setting of an office conflict, the conversation might unfold as follows. Person 1. I understand there's been some frustration with the recent project. Can we talk about what's been bothering you? Coworker. It's just that my ideas seem to be overlooked. I feel like my contributions aren't valued. Person 1. I'm really sorry to hear that you feel this way. It's important to me that everyone on the team feels heard and valued. Could you give me an example of a time when you felt your ideas were dismissed? Coworker. Well, during the last team meeting, when I suggested an alternative approach to the project, it felt like it was immediately shot down. Person 1. I remember that discussion. I didn't realize that's how it came across. I thought we were all just brainstorming different options. I appreciate your creativity, and I'll make sure we take more time to consider each suggestion moving forward. Coworker, I just want to make sure our project succeeds, and I believe some of my ideas could really help. Person 1. And I believe that too. Your insights are valuable to the team. Let's set up a time where we can go over your ideas in more detail. How does that sound? Coworker, that sounds fair. I just want to contribute effectively. Person 1, absolutely, and that's what we want too. Let's work together to make sure we're utilizing everyone's strengths, including yours. This conversation shows an attempt to address a conflict with understanding and empathy, aiming to reassure the coworker that their contributions are valued and to find a constructive path forward. In the midst of vacation planning, the conversation could go like this. Person 1, look at this place. The beaches look amazing. And it says here there are lots of hiking trails nearby. Person 2, that does sound incredible. But have you seen this city? The historical sites and the food culture seem fascinating. Person 1, true, that's a tough choice. Beach and nature, or city and culture. What are we in the mood for this time? Person 2, I'm leaning towards the adventure and relaxation combo. Maybe a place where we can have both the beach and some cultural exploration. Person 1. Good idea. What about this island? It has beautiful beaches, and there's a small town with rich history and local festivals. Person 2. That sounds perfect. We could relax on the beach for a few days, then explore the town and maybe take part in a festival. Person 1. Let's look into flights and accommodations. If we book early, we might get a good deal. Person 2. I'll check the travel restrictions and requirements for that destination too. It's better to be prepared. Person 1. And we should make a list of things to pack. I read that the weather can be quite variable, so we'll need to bring a range of clothing options. Person 2. Definitely. Oh, and let's not forget to check out some local cuisine spots. I want to try some authentic dishes. Person 1. Agreed. This is shaping up to be an amazing trip. I can't wait. Person 2. Me neither. This will be an adventure to remember. This conversation captures the excitement and collaborative spirit of planning a vacation, highlighting the anticipation of new experiences and the joy of discovering a destination together.